President Trump returns from Paris. Democrats show their new agenda as they take back the House. And she is running again for president. She is doing it. So, at least they say anyway. Now, starting off today with the article from the USA Today uh, covering Donald Trump's, President Trump's um, attendance at this uh, commemorance for uh, First World War I, and 60 other world leaders were there as well. Now, while he was there, they obviously talked about NATO and what other countries need to do to contribute more because the United States contributes the most out of all of them. There's a target for all the other countries to reach at 2% of investment into NATO. However, there's only five states or countries who have done that, uh, and that is obviously the U.S., the U.K., Greece, Estonia, and uh, Litva. Those are the only five countries who have actually contributed the 2% mark. President Trump has continuously stated that they need to invest more because we are investing heavily more than any other country. We actually pay the most into NATO. And for those of you who don't know what NATO is, it was established, I believe, in 1949 after World War II to help stabilize the region in Europe, then progressed into protecting the region in Europe from the communist countries uh, over there, you know, the Soviet Union that eventually exploded in that region uh, to become the powerhouse. So that was the initial reason for NATO, still exists today, mainly to protect those European countries. So it seems, although they have done other things, they have sent troops out after 9-11 when we requested help in Afghanistan, uh, you know, other things as well. However, President Trump is still beating that drum that they need to pay more and make sure that they're reaching that limit that they promised to meet. Although they did state that that limit would be met in 2020, it's only 2018, there's still some time for them to meet that goal. Also, another important thing that took place during this meeting of world leaders was President Trump and President Putin talking. However, nothing came out of it. Despite what we hear in the media, as the only thing we actually hear in the media is a video and a picture of President Trump smiling at Vladimir Putin as he arrives in and President Macron and Chancellor Arkula from Germany both give Putin a glare and Trump smiles at him. And I think this picture was a little disingenuous from a lot of the left-wing articles. And the reason I say that is because if you actually watch the video as President Putin goes through and shakes the hand of the President of France, the Chancellor of Germany, and President Trump, the President of France, the Chancellor of Germany, smile at Putin. The media makes it seem as if President Trump was the only one smiling at Putin, welcoming him here. Another thing that I thought was kind of disingenuous from the media is that President Putin ended up putting his hands on Trump as he met him. They shook hands and then he tapped him. And people that are journalists for left-wing news were stating, oh, this is Putin telling President Trump, good boy. What they failed to realize is President Trump actually patted him on his shoulder first and President Putin acknowledged that pat and then patted him back. So this whole trying to read body language and stating that President Trump is a puppet and that Putin is his boss is complete asinine and they're just reaching. We found nothing with the Russia investigations thus far. We probably will not find out anything because there isn't anything to be found. The only people who have been incarcerated or are being prosecuted are individuals that had nothing to do with Russia. They had nothing to do. That's not the reason they're being jailed or prosecuted. If I'm not mistaken, the former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn is being prosecuted for perjury, and former campaign manager Paul Manafort is being jailed due to things to do with Ukraine. Nothing to do with Russia nor Trump. The only evidence they have on Russia collusion is zero. 
The only thing they actually have is that President Trump may have not picked the best people to work on his campaign. That's about it. They can't let it go, though. And it's kind of funny. And it's really hysterical that they're picking apart these little things. And since President Macron first embraced Trump, his ratings in France have kind of went down. They're not doing too hot. So he came out and attacked President Trump from what Trump stated he was a nationalist. And this is what President Macron had to say. Nationalism is a portrayal of patriotism. Nationalism is a portrayal of patriotism by saying, our interests first, who cares about the others? This to me is stupid. The reason I say that is because literally this is the definition of nationalism. Then I'll give you the definition of patriotism and you will understand why I think this is stupid of what he said. Definition of nationalism. This is from, uh, I just typed it into Google. And this is the definition that it comes up with. Patriotic feeling, principles, or efforts. And this is the definition for patriotism. The quality of being patriotic, vigorous support for one's country. Both of them mean the same thing. However, nationalism has a negative connotation behind it because of 20th century history, understandably so. That is why I said in prior episodes that I believe President Trump would have been better off using patriot as opposed to nationalist. Maybe the reason he did this was to show the world how hypocritical it can be of itself by using literally a word that means the same thing as patriot. The only bad thing about nationalism is it gets conflated with white nationalism and wanting an ethno-cleansing. That is um, the unfortunate thing that wraps around nationalism. However, its meanings are very similar to those of patriot, if not synonymous with one another. So I don't know why he's... I, I get why he said it. I can't say I don't know. I understand it. It just doesn't make much sense to me for him to be saying it other than it will help him gain some popularity within his country because Europe doesn't really care for Trump too much and nobody really does to be honest with you and the reason they don't is because he goes against the grain and he's doing his own thing and actually putting America first which other presidents weren't doing so that's a beautiful thing that he's doing other countries don't like that so I can see why President Macron wanted to start dishing out some mud at President Trump I understand it I get it it's all part of the game now, going over back to the states. So the Democrats, as we know, have picked up the House. They've won it by a large margin. That was predicted by any poll you would have read. That was predicted that Democrats are going to get back the House. Republicans are keeping the Senate. There's still some Senate races going on right now. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, there are some House races still currently going as well. Now, the Democrats... Uh, couple of their plans is to investigate as well as propose legislation. Their legislation revolves around automatic voter registration, which we'll cover in a second, more gun control, which we'll cover in a second, and some things to do with health care. They don't get into any specifics on what they want to do with health care, but it is on their agenda. No surprise there. We do know that health care does need reformed and it needs work. Hopefully, the Republicans and Democrats can work to help fix some of what Obamacare has caused. Now, some of the things they want to investigate regard the Robert Mueller investigation stating that they want to see if President Trump has any impacts on the investigation, which to me seems as if they're reaching to try to find something he has done wrong, which he hasn't. If he has done something wrong, it would be all over the news. It would be the only thing we talk about that is what the mainstream media is waiting for, the demise of President Trump. That is literally what they're waiting for. So if Trump did something to put the special counsel on, in jeopardy, the media would be completely consumed by that and nothing else. However, we haven't seen it. We haven't talked about Russia in a long time. So I think this right here is just trying to stir up the pot a little bit more and hopefully gain some popularity among the voters in America, so that way in 2020 they can work up their base and hopefully, you know, upset President Trump by taking back the White House. 
That's why I think they want to stir up the Robert Mueller investigation some more. Another thing they want to look into is possible interference with the media, which I don't understand whatsoever. I do get why they're doing it is because of Jim Acosta was no longer allowed. I guess his white, his hard pass was taken away, which means that he can't get into the White House grounds without clearance from the office of the press secretary. Not his whole White House credentials removed, but a hard pass. So that is probably what they're referring to as far as interference with the media. That also I don't understand. Jim Acosta was totally rude and way out of line while in the press conference and not letting other people ask their questions, interrupting them, refusing to give the microphone, and continuously lies about not putting his hands on a White House uh, aid. Although people are saying that it was an assault, I agree with them. I don't think it was assault. I'm not saying it was assault. To deny the fact that he put his hands on her, though, is lying, it blatantly lying. And this is why the mainstream media gets the rep they do, because it is fake news that they're pushing that he didn't put his hands on her. That is so obvious. And then they claim that the White House sent out an altered video, although that same video was actually shown by um, Michael Metz, I believe, on Twitter. He's some intelligence officer. He's left-leaning, and he actually was in favor of Jim Acosta doing that. So there are some people who are claiming it's altered, which doesn't... There's actually a lot of mainstream places that are claiming it's altered, but BuzzFeed said it wasn't, and Vice says it wasn't either. So it's really conflicting, and this is what's furthering the divide is that we can't even agree on the truth anymore, which is really sad. It is really, really sad that we can't agree on the truth. So that's what I believe they want to do with the public interference of the media. And as far as the censors go, they want to question him on the census question as well, which is, are you an American citizen on the census of 2020? They believe that this will deter some immigrants from actually filling out the census, which will then affect those states that have hemi heavy immigrants within them because it will make them fearful that the government is going to come after them for whatever reason. Although there is nothing to worry about since and if they are legal immigrants. This to me also seems a little crazy. I say this because you have to say whether or not you're a United States citizen to get a job. You have to say whether or not you're United States citizens to get financial aid. You have to say whether or not you're United States citizens when you apply for college. So this to me just seems like a run-of-the-mill question. I don't understand the controversy behind it other than they want illegal immigrants to contribute to the consensus, which will then help these states receive more federal funding due to their population and increase the number of seats they get in the House of Representatives. That's the only thing I can think of why they seem it, they, they, they want it to be controversial. I think they want it to be controversial because it really isn't. It should be a straightforward thing. And if we're just collecting the people who live in the United States, we should just collect the number of people who are actual residents of the United States and not illegally here. So that way, federal dollars don't get spent on people who are not supposed to be here. Now, there are also calls to have a hearing for President Trump's acting attorney general, Matthew Whitaker, the most likely candidate to become chair of the House Judiciary Committee, which we covered before, is Jared Nadler. And he says that he wants to call for uh, Matthew Whitaker to appear before lawmakers. There's a lot of controversy going on whether or not this is constitutional, what President Trump did. And from what I can see is that President Trump did not act unconstitutional in his appointment of Matthew Whitaker to be the acting attorney general. And this is because of the Vacancy Reform Act, which authorizes a president to designate an acting AG, an officer or employee who has been at the DOJ for at least 90 days. Whitaker meets that standard. He was the chief staff of uh, former Attorney General Jeff Sessions. So this unconstitutional thing doesn't make very much sense because the president is allowed to fill that vacancy with somebody 
that has been in the DOJ for 90 days or more. Also, Whitaker has already went through a confirmation, pro I mean, a vetting progress uh, process before because he was a uh, district court judge as well under George W. Bush. Now, there are also talks on gun laws that they want to get through, which is something that seems a little redundant to me. And the reason I say it seems redundant is because a lot of what they want to do is already implemented. We just have to follow these laws. For instance, Representative Mike Thomas, a Democrat of California, wants to implement universal background checks and require gun retailers and gun sailors to register all gun purchases through the National Instant Criminal Background Check. Now, they already have to do that. They already have to do a background check before you can purchase a weapon. And they have to put that in the system as well. So this is something that doesn't make sense to me and why I say it's redundant. We already have laws on the books that will do exactly what they want to implement. The other thing they would want to do is put a national ban on assault style firearms, which doesn't make very much sense because they can't define what an assault style weapon is. They just can't. They tried to do it in 1994. The language was too vague and so they got rid of it and it didn't reduce violence whatsoever. There's actually studies that show it didn't work at all and violence actually rose during that period of time where the Clinton administration put an assault weapons ban out. Another newly elected Democrat that wants to implement not only the assault weapons ban, but a national gun registry. For those of you who don't know what a national gun registry is, it's just putting all the names of gun owners, gun owners on a website nowadays that will state, you know, what kind of guns they own, etc., who they are. The only benefit to this is that the cops would be able to trace back a weapon if it was legally purchased on a crime scene. There are no other benefits to this. There's actually a lot of fear around this national gun registry because people fear that the government may abuse that and use it as a tool to target people who are against them and start taking away their guns. That is, that, in my opinion, that is something to be rightfully fearful of. We know that depending on who's in power, the government can be misused. We also know that freedom of speech is being threatened at the moment with this talk of hate speech, which I've talked about several times. It is completely subjective. What offends you may not offend me, vice versa. We may, we may agree on certain things. We may disagree on certain things. Just because we disagree doesn't mean that what I'm saying is hate speech or what you are saying is hate speech. The reason I bring this up is because they could use that national gun registry to take away people's arms who have different political opinions than them and use it as a way to say, well, we're combating people who use hate speech and taking their firearms away so that way they're not a harm. They're not, you know, they won't harm anybody else and their rhetoric won't incite violence or they seem as if they're going to cause violence because of the words they're using, even though there was no call for violence. I can see that being used that kind of way. There is obviously no quick move to make this uh, get through or anything like that. These are just talks about what they would like to do. Now, I want to go over with you guys the gun laws that are currently in place. The screen is loading right now, and I'm getting this from gun.laws.com and it says gun control laws you must know now this is taking a little bit here because my computer is running a little slow today so I apologize for this but I thought this was important to go over the gun laws that are already in place because I know so many people here that a lot of these laws are redundant but never get to hear why they're redundant other than the fact that we already have these laws in place and not understand what the laws actually state that are in place and why we should just enforce the laws that we already have as opposed to adding new gun, uh, new gun control legislation. So 
For instance, in, um, right here, there's the Gun Act of 1968. What this does is it permits certain individuals from possessing firearms. And those categories of individuals are fel felons, fugitives from jail, unlawful drug users, and those who have been dishonorably discharged from military. It also prohibits 18-year-olds from possessing handguns or handgun ammunition with certain exceptions for employment, target practice, and education, and certain other defense purposes as well. It also requires for um, people who are going to sell guns to get a federal firearms license. There's also another act called the National Firearms Act of 1980, 1934, which makes it so you cannot own a machine gun, short barrel rifles, short barrel short shotguns, suppressors, and destructive devices that include grenades, bombs, and things of that nature. The other law that added on to that is the Gun Act of 1968, which then allowed what which then banned uh, the importing of these illegal weapons unless there was some logical reason for you to use them for sport. And the other act that was most recently implemented, if I'm not mistaken, is the Brady Handgun Violence Protection Act, which happened after Ronald Reagan was shot. And this basically states that, it, it, this was the most controversial one of all of those. And it basically states that any gun purchases has to go through a background check before they're allowed to obtain the weapon. There's also a wait period. And guess what? They're entered into the National Instant Criminal Background Check. So what my, Representative Mike Thomas wanted to do is already implemented. We already have that on the books. We just need to enforce our laws that we currently have. It just doesn't make sense to me why we seem to forget that we already have these laws in the books. It really does. They claim they want to close the gun show loophole. There is no gun show loophole. At a gun show, you are required to fill out a background uh, application before you can even purchase a weapon. There are videos on YouTube exposing this. So, yeah, these gun laws that Democrats want to propose are extremely redundant and also intrusive to your freedom and potentially dangerous to our democracy as we have it now. So... That's one of the things they want to do. Another thing that they would like to do is actually allow automatic registration for voters. And so for those of you who don't know, that is just building off a prior act. I believe it's the National uh, Registration Act. I think it was done in the 60s, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere along there. What it did is give you the option to register to vote when you got your new license. What they want to do now with this automatic voter registry is to sign you up automatically to be a registered voter once you get your license. The issue with this is illegal immigrants can obtain driver's license in the United States. That then means if they're an illegal immigrant, they get a driver's license, they can then be registered to vote. And guess who they're going to vote for? going to vote Democratic. I don't care if you vote Democratic or Republican. But what I do care about is having people vote who are not citizens in our country. They shouldn't have a say in who's elected into office because they shouldn't even be here in the first place. Once again, I will reiterate this. I am not against immigration. I am all for it. If we didn't have a system that would be abused, i.e. the welfare system, I would want more immigration and more loose regulations around it. We need the workers. There's 7 million jobs left unfilled. There are more jobs than there are workers in the United States currently. So we do need the workers. So it's not as if I'm against that or anti-immigration. We just have a broken welfare system that is being abused. So we need to make sure that that isn't being taken advantage of anymore the welfare system that's being abused is going to be the reason why our country falls if we don't do something about it. Entitlements are the main reason for our national debt. All this talk about it being because of the wars we're in is completely false. 
I've done an episode on this before, so you can go check that out. I cover extensively why entitlements are actually hurting the country more than they're helping the country. And we spend far more on entitlements than we do anything else. So for them to want to do an automatic registration voter is not, not good. And I think that that should definitely be challenged and not allowed. Another thing they would like to do is get money out of politics and not allow people to spend money on political campaigns or a political candidate. This goes against the First Amendment right, which was already ruled on in the Citizens Union uh, case that went all the way to the Supreme Court. They ruled that you know spending money in political campaigns was your First Amendment right, which I agree with 100%. You should be allowed to spend money when it comes to political campaigns. The reason I say that is because if you want to support your candidate and do more than volunteer, maybe you don't have the time to volunteer. What you can do is then give them money and support them that way. And so if you take that away, that can be very detrimental to our political system as we know it, in my opinion. Now, the last thing we're going to cover for today is Hillary Clinton. She just can't leave. She can't leave us alone. She really can't. She, so apparently, there are these two aides that used to work for her. One is Mark Penn. He was a pollster and senior advisor to former Bill Clinton and ex-secretary of state Hillary Clinton from 1995 to 2008. And Andrew Stein, a former Manhattan Democratic Party figure and New York City Council president. They wrote the following. This I'm reading from the Washington Examiner. It states, Mrs. Clinton has a 75% approval rating among Democrats, an unfinished mission to be the first female president, and a personal grievance against Mr. Trump and whose supporters paraled her with chance of lock her up. This must be avenged. So what they're saying is that Hillary Clinton needs to get revenge, and the way to do that is to win the presidency. That doesn't seem like a good agenda to run on is revenge. Revenge. You want to get even with your political opponent, so therefore you want to take over the country? What are your plans? What are you going to do for the country? Tell us. Not only that, but haven't you learned? We don't want you in office. We don't. The American people have spoke up two times. Two times. And we said, no, thank you. We don't want you. You're a crazy lady. You're corrupt. And you are very unhealthy. Does nobody remember the video of her passing out right in front of her car after leaving an event and, uh, and all of her people swarmed her blocked the cameras from seeing what happened and then picked her up and put her in the car that's not good she can't even move 10 feet and she believes she can be the president of the United States that's stupid Joe Rogan actually uh, said something pretty funny on one of his podcasts and I think he he, he illustrated the point that she is totally unfit to be president perfectly by saying she can't even stand up fast. You know, she can't even stand up fast. If you can't even stand up fast, how are you going to be president? I thought that was very well said on his behalf. And I agree. However, she just can't get enough. She just has to keep going. Although her party has Kamala Harris and Elizabeth Warren who want to run and potentially become the first female president. I don't believe the Democrats are going to take back the House. I mean, take back the White House, that is. I think Trump will win re-election in 2020. The economy is doing well. We seem to be really strong right now as a country. So I believe Trump is going to keep that. And the Democrats just... There are other options out there. Truly. Truly. If you put up Hillary Clinton one more time, do you not understand how many more people are going to leave your party? She was literally the worst candidate that I have ever seen for president. Ever. Ever. No charisma. No charisma. She's the woman who stated, I always carry black, uh, black sauce. <laughs> I always carry hot sauce with me. And she did this 
while on a black show. That's why I said black sauce, because I was thinking she's on a black show talking about hot sauce. Anyway, so she said, I always carry hot sauce with me everywhere I go. And then one of the commentators asked her, are you just saying that to get support? And then she looks at him, well, is it working? What the hell? Are you serious? She literally just came out and said, yep, yeah, that, that's really what I'm doing. And is it working? This is who we want to be our president of the United States? I think not. So that's what we have for the news today. I hope you all enjoyed it. Hope you all have a wonderful day. And yeah, we'll be back here tomorrow. Peace.